Thank you very much, Ryan. We're honored to be joined by the defensive coordinator, assistant head coach of the Fighting Irish, Bob Diaco, and uh, almost all of the uh, letters you thought you would get are in. Tell me how you feel about this class. It's great. It's a great group. You know, defensively they have, you know, one of the key components was not necessarily an answer at any one position, but but to try to have great depth throughout all positions defensively. So, um, you know, the, kind of the idea that, that there's a whole layer of, of depth at every spot. And, you know, when we call out the defense to do a pursuit drill, for example, and you get to that, that, that first-year group, a whole, uh, almost the whole defense is going to be able to run out. So um, that was, that's going to be a nice piece. And then they can, they can gain their own kind of, um, you know, inside their own class bond and, and commonality um, as they – you know, aren't fighting with each other for the same spot. You had such a dominant defense this season. Now you do lose three key guys, but I know you want to get to the point where you just kind of reload, and it looks like you're getting to that point with guys behind them who can step into those positions. Oh, you're exactly right, Jack. The, the, um, you know, the each position has depth. Um, players, functional players that, that uh, you know, athletically can get the jobs done and mentally get the jobs done. And, and the culture set. So they have an understanding of, of how we're going to play defense. Now, as the coordinator, you're familiar with everybody who was recruited on defense, but there are specific guys you did recruit individually. Let's start with back in your home state, Galloway, New Jersey, Rashad Kinlaw. Yeah, Rashad is, is, a, is a big athlete. Um, you know, he can do a lot of different jobs. Uh, he's done a lot of different jobs for his school, uh, fast, explosive, um, athletic, like I said, strong. Uh, he can, you know, he's played quarterback. He's got great ball skills. He can catch the ball. He's got body control, um, and he's a tough, aggressive guy. So, and, and you know, he's, you, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of things that are similar in his life that, that fit nicely on our campus. He's going to be a great um, asset to the student body here as well. Jalen Smith, linebacker out of Fort Wayne. Well, good news. Max Redfield, defensive back out of Mission Viejo, California. His letter is in and improved. So talk about him. Well, I was just, I was just, my phone was just buzzing. So I'm assuming it was, it was one of those things. So well, hopefully he's watching. He's, he didn't, he didn't, <laughs> he did not, not pick up the phone. He had to do this first, Max. Max, Max is, you know, a great player. And, again, another guy that's an RKG, as Coach Kelly would say, the right kind of guy. Um, he's a strong student. He's achievement-oriented. He has an expectation of greatness. Um, you know, I'm there the other day, for example, and we're watching him play basketball. And his team is playing good uh, to great, and he's playing hard, but maybe a shot here not falling. And then their star player goes out, and then he starts to up his game so great, um, produced most of his points, had steals, you know, just all over the court, you know. And then you see him after, and he's still upset with how the game started for him, you know. So he's just a perfectionist and a great, great competitor uh, to go along with, with really, really the top tangible and intangible skills in the country. And we were getting to Jalen Smith out of Fort Wayne, considered the top incoming linebacker in the country. He has the potential to be an outstanding linebacker. Oh, there's no question. He fits what we do. So, you know, like, like we've always talked about, we talked about almost four years ago now, yes. talking about, hey, we're, we're not interested in collecting, you know, uh, stars. We're not interested in winning the national recruiting battle, uh, which which would be nice to do anyway. But we're not. It's not the driver. We're interested in in putting the best team together, to putting the best unit together, to putting the best position together. So that's what we're striving to do. Jalen fits our defensive system. He fits perfectly lockstep with the student body here. I mean, if he was a if he was just a student and not an athlete. He wouldn't be out of place, and he's not going to be out, be out of place on the team at this level, and he's, and he's a perfect fit for what we do defensively. So every box is checked with Jalen. Um, he's, a, he's a super nice guy and a fine human being. Um, he's, you know, we're honored to have him as, as a you know, part of our family. You know, on this show each year, we've never done a lot with stars, and I've always felt for years and years that – it's hard to do that with football players because maybe more than any other sport, yeah, you know they're good coming out of high school, but there's so much more development there. And if, when I look each year, some of the 
four and five stars become stars. Some of them disappear. It's, almost, it's really too early to say this person is going to do this, especially if you haven't recruited them to fit your style. Yeah, Jack, you make a great point. And, <clears throat> you know, I've been saying it for a while not to get on, you know, a, a soapbox or, well, we got or lots get of in time. front of the, the, the pulpit here. But the, the recruiting machine, mm-hmm. and I understand why it is, and I understand that it's a business. The publicity machine. But at a particular point, in some cases, it overtakes the fact that the prospect is trying to select a university that's going to impact the rest of his life. And it becomes more about recruiting and the recruiting machine than it becomes about that particular player picking an institution that fits their needs for the rest of their life. So when, when that happens, there's not alignment. And when there's not alignment, Everything in the day is drudgery. When the player ends up at a place he shouldn't be, getting up to go to math class becomes hard. Getting energized for the meeting becomes hard. Going to weight train becomes hard. Going to practice becomes hard. Production falls off in all areas. As opposed to, as opposed to the, the, um, the player is aligned properly with the university and the defense and, or the, the, the team and the defense and the university. Then there's great energy. And getting up for class is easier, and going to class is easier, and taking notes is easier, and being an engaging part of the student body is easier, and practice is easier. And me, it all is because about energy. Because you see the goal and you see the progress you're making towards it's all of your It's just all goals. about your energy and your attitude. You know, the fact of the matter is, you think about yourself, Jack, and things that you didn't want to do. Did they get your full talents? You know, your wife sends you to go do well, the dishes. You try to get your full <laughs> talent, but yeah, you're, you're not right. interested in doing them. You know, and and then all of a sudden, you know, you're not getting them as clean as they should be because you're not well, attacking the job. Thing. I throw all the laundry into one <laughs> one load. Exactly. And now I don't have to do it anymore. Exactly. If you were passionate yeah. about your clothes, your <laughs> whites separated. being whiter, yeah. your 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 darks well, being they are darker. White <laughs> because my wife does the laundry. <laughs> Doug Randolph, linebacker out of Richmond, Virginia. <clears throat> yes, he he's another guy that. Um, can do a lot of jobs. And uh, he played basically outside on the line of scrimmage for his team, a very talented player, uh, phys- physical player. What really sold me on on Doug, because he's got so many great things going, and he was a, a national recruit and a guy that had a lot of energy in the, in the recruiting process. But um, when I had an opportunity to watch him practice, um, he's a he's an intense heavy-headed whacker. I mean, he is a striker. He's not a decelerator. He's a physical, physical, hard-working guy um, on a day-to-day basis. So um, he's going to be a guy that, that uh, he, he possesses uh, tangible traits that allow him to be an outside on the line of scrimmage player, or he could even be a second-level player inside. And Michael Deeb out of Plantation, Florida, another one you personally recruit. Right, truly an inside linebacker, you know, the driver, the Mike-style guy where he's got a demonstrative um, uh, uh, communication skill set. You know, there's some traits that people don't think are just looking for great players. Well, listen, if you play Mike for us, that's not the only thing that, that goes into your evaluation. If you play boundary safety for us, there are other pieces to the puzzle that you need to possess. Uh, Mike's a guy at Mike that, um, you know, he can drive. He's an A student. He's achievement-oriented. He's a studier. He'll be that guy that's the extension of the coaches on the field, Um, along with possessing um, excellent size, excellent speed, change of direction, um, and and a good, you know, what we call FBI, great football intelligence. I want to wrap this up by touching on one thing that I've noticed over the years. Through my job, I get to see you on the practice field and some other times – with your players just the connection that you have developed with your defense it's intense and it is close both between you and the players and the players and you how does that come about and how does that help this team win well if if you have to read a book or or um, get your check on the first and the 15th to gain energy for what you're doing then at some point in time you're gonna slip up well, just me personally, I love football, and I love the men that serve the game. So the energy is that way every every day. Um, there's an intensity to it um, that, that you want the game to look like it should look, 
and you want the players to improve the way that they should improve. And when when there's nothing but love for both those te- for both those things, you can't help but be drawn to that. So I'm drawn to it when I'm around players and coaches that are the same, and the players are drawn to it. So th- so so then the relationship happens, and then they see a consistency day in and day out where where you're the same guy, and it and it and it and then trust builds. When you look at the numbers, going to be kind of hard to be better than you were this year. But I know you well enough to know, I mean, that's no question, you will be better. So what is the next step for this defense? Again, you you go back to numbers. We're not about numbers. We're not about big picture. I'm not about what, you know, if the total sum of our parts at the end of the competitive challenge adds up to more than the opponent, great. But – Every single person in our organization, the defensive unit, the players and the coaches, there's an expectation that they're going to get better every day. So whatever that means. That they're going to get better. And if everybody if everybody on the unit gets better every day, the unit gets better every day. True. And then you get to be as good as you can be, right? Is You're, that the goal? The goal is for every person in the organization to get better every day. And that's the goal for everybody we're playing too, I'm sure. It is. <laughs> Thank you for the time. Congratulations on a great Thank you, Jack. Course. It was a pleasure. Irish assistant head coach and defensive coordinator Bob Diaco. Ryan, back to you in the studio. Go Irish. Oh!